Hey everyone. First of all, you know damn well I don't believe in the political process a whole lot. I've seen, I've watched it over the course of my adult livelihood. And what's that, 30 years in the running now almost. And I've seen how it's just a continual race to the bottom. To the lowest common denominator, I've seen where our freedoms have continuously been eroded and erased as a result of political actions and political parties. It's gangs fighting against each other. And when it's all about using the force of the mysticism, the force of government against each other. So, like I say, it's a race to the lowest common denominator. But I also recognize that even though now, me, at, at 46 years of age, I, I've already, uh, you know, I've matured to the point where I don't believe in political masters at all. And I don't need them. As a matter of fact, I've managed to survive and thrive quite well in my life without needing to clamor for government in any way, shape, or form, right? So it works, and it can work for a lot of people. But I recognize that most people still function in the dogmatic realm of statism because that's what they've been taught their whole lives when they were kids or their families or dogmatic beliefs in the indoctrination of the state was pounding in their heads from very early ages. So people are still going to go out every time there's an election, people are still going to go out and try to choose a political master. I have to recognize that reality. That's the realism, right? That's the pragmatist side of me. Now, I have uh, uh, one side of me that, that thinks that we should never believe in having a political master or ruler of any sort. But I realize that I do, my thoughts and how I believe it doesn't mean that the rest of the world is going to function in that manner. So I have to function in the real world. And in the real world, somebody is going to become the next leader of the, the Conservative Party of Canada. Now... Because we know the Liberals and the NDP are salivating at, the, at the, the thought of being the next populist party because the Liberals are really fucking themselves up. I mean, think about it. The weed legalization thing, right? All the millennials that voted for them for the weed legalization. And now they see, oh, you cocksuckers. All, you're all raiding. All, you, all it is is just you're, you're getting rid of all the, the mom and pops and the small businesses to create crony corporatives so you can have a government-funded institutional type crony set up where you have to buy your from government-sanctioned outlets, right? That's not what the people were hoping for. I guarantee you that. And the other aspect of this whole thing, and you know a large part of what got the uh, liberals their majority was the, this, their promise, their continuous, how many, what was it, 1,800 times the liberals said, this will be the last time first past the post will be used in Canadian elections. And they're saying they're, eh, fuck that. Now, we realize that actually if we did that, French parties, people, maybe even libertarians would have a say at the table. And they realized, oh, we can't have that. Oh, we can't have that. So they said, no, 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 no election reform, no more. <laughs> so, like I said, especially for millennials, I hope you realize, I hope this was your first civic lesson in never trust a politician. Back to the story at hand. Analysis from CBC News Politics. Fundraising data suggests Bernier, this is Maxim Bernier, um, could benefit most from ranked conservative leadership vote. So apparently this Maxim Bernier is in first place in the conservative leadership race. And to be honest with you, out of them all, I will tell you, and you know that I, I don't believe in voting or politics or choosing a political master, but I'm going to tell you right now, I know that everyone else, or for the most part, most Canadians do, so I have to function in that reality. And I'll tell you, those of you who do, Max and Bernie seems like the one to go. If you're going to choose, or if you're conservative or a libertarian or anyone that's anti-liberal or progressive, right, collectivist, Max and Bernie seems like the man, the man for the job. Now, if he's wise, if he's smart, and I've said this in, in past comments on his page, is let Kelly Leach and Kevin O'Leary, you know, hang themselves. Although they really do, we need those people. And I, I don't want to throw them into the bus because you need them to push the party um, the way they're, in the way that they're going. I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Let them push that party to the small, limited government you know, a little bit more nationalist, right? Let them let them do their thing. And, and you know, don't try to play that safe center ground. That's the thing, too. Don't play the safe center ground. All you have to do is out of the three of you, this is what I'm, this is the thing with Maxim. I hope you see this video at some stage. Out of the three of you, the wisest thing you can do is help push them further and further and further to the right, but 
as long as the optics serves you best and makes you look like the most presentable and appealing to the rest of Canada, then you've won the battle, you've won the minds, you've won the hearts of all of Canadians. Or, sorry, not all Canadians, but you will have won the minds, hearts of Canadians that are sick of the establishment, sick of the status quo, and sick of this goddamn bullshit of constant, like even the past conservatives, Harper conservatives, progressive conservatives, none of them were truly conservatives. They were, like I say, progressive conservatives, which is an oxymoron all on its own. How can you be a progressive and a conservative? But anyways, or, or Harper conservatives, so... You know, it was just all about the collective of his, of his own ideology. But use your libertarian leading ideology. Use your belief in actual genuine freedom and liberty. Let that be your guide. Because I guarantee you, yes, Canadians are very finicky. And I know this. And we're not the U.S. You would be much more popular in the U.S. So that I have no doubt. But if you're sensible, if you're smart, articulate, and don't be afraid to be a little bit outside the realm of political normal behavior too because Canadians like someone that's willing to step up to the plate. Look at, listen, Canadians are tired. I know I am. Many of us are tired of this boring fucking bullshit. Yes, be willing to speak out. Be willing to stand up for your principles. Now, don't be outrageous. Don't be outlandish. Don't be bombastic because, yeah, Canadians are still much more... You know, we're not Americans. That's 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 a given. But I think Max and Bernier has a very, very good chance of not just being successful as the conservative candidate, but if he's smart and wise about how he plays his campaign when it comes time for tw the 2019 um, prime ministerial election, I think he has a very good chance of winning that, not just winning the race, but winning the hearts, minds, and, and opinions of the Canadian people en masse. Here's hoping. Here's, here's to you, Maxime. Here's to you, hopefully you, and you know, I will, I will help you in any way, shape, or form, if I can. I will, I will make it a point to help disseminate and spread your message, your philosophy. If you stick to the true principles that I believe that you're capable of, then I will help you in any way, shape, or form. And Pete, there are a lot of Canadians out there that are just yearning and salivating and hoping and praying that somebody will be the voice of reason, to be the representative of people that have not had a voice on the Canadian political landscape for a long time. Here's the hoping. It's Canadian Libertarian. And I love liberty.